My name is Susanna Wewers, and for my final project, I chose to investigate Rockwell Kent's painting entitled Greenland Landscape, located at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas, in the early 20th century collection. This piece was completed in the year 1932 to 1933 and is an oil on canvas painting. This painting is 26 by 47 inches and when framed is 34 and a half inches by 55 and a quarter inch by 3 inches. When I selected this piece, I had no idea who Rockwell Kent was and I had never seen a work of his. Upon further research, I learned that Kent actually survived a boat wreck during a storm on a journey to Greenland. He so enjoyed the people, culture, and landscape that he decided to stay for the entire summer. While in Greenland, Kent's creativity thrived, and he would often refer to his year in Greenland as the happiest and most productive year of his life. Kent would take a total of three trips to the country that captured his heart and mind. In Frederick Lewis's journal published online entitled The Stormy Petrel of American Art, he tells of Kent's time in Greenland and its influence on his painting. To delve deeper into this work, I would like to examine the mountains. These mountains are composed of varying angular and soft lines, which help to portray the rough, treacherous terrain of these beautiful structures. The zigzag diagonals and converging lines help to draw the viewer's eye to the peak of the mountain and to the sunrise peeking out from behind these spectacular hills. The painting is separated into planes by the blended colors in the sky, the separation of colors in the ocean, the highlight of the shoreline, and the dark contrast of the shoreline and its inhabitants in relation to the bright highlight of the ocean. This relation of color contrast makes for a very interesting piece. The blending of the calming blues, greens, and pale yellows in the sunrise offers a sense of peace to the viewer as they represent the beginning of a new morning, and with that, a set of new, wondrous experiences. The stark contrast of the dark blue with the light blue adds depth to the painting it makes the mountains and opposite shorelines seem very distant from the characters at the bottom of the piece. When I first looked at this piece, one thing that stuck out to me is the seemingly monochromatic characters at the bottom of the piece. The stark contrast between the bottom of the piece and the light blue of the ocean captivated my eye and forced me to closely examine these people. Upon further examination, I found that they are composed of many muted colors such as blue, red, pink, and yellow. These people seem to be setting up a camp of some sort or returning from an early hunt. Their small size emphasizes the vastness of the ocean and the enormity of the mountains. The cool purplish gray of the mountains, in contrast with the stark white of the snow, conveys a calm feeling of serenity and peace, which is odd for a place so far north that is usually considered to be very harsh and unforgiving. The bright colors in the landscape of this piece emphasize Kent's true happiness when he is working in Greenland and captures the most content time in the artist's life. While these colors seem realistic, they are brighter than real life in order to portray the artist's feelings about his surroundings and his love for this place. The composition of this piece consists of the towering mountains, the peaceful sunrise, a calm vast ocean, and adventurous people. All of these elements work together to capture the curious wonderment the artist felt about his Greenland home and his fondness of its beautiful landscapes that offered countless adventures and scenery. The medium of oil on canvas simplified Kent's painting inside his home during the dark months in Greenland. The slow to dry paint made it easier for the artist to work on the painting for longer amounts of time and perfect it before considering the work completed. This type of paint blends well as seen in the sunrise and creates a more luminous color than other kinds of paint. While it can also be an advantage, one limitation to this medium is the slow drying paint that makes it difficult to continue with the piece before it is completely dry. In this piece, light is used to highlight the rising of the sun across the peaks of the mountain. The shadows are used to illustrate the towering hills over the valley between them and the water directly below. The light and shadows play together to give the piece a more realistic feel and make the various elements more appealing to the viewer's eye. According to Jake Milgram Wine's book, Rockwell Kent, The Mythic and the Modern, the brilliant turquoise skies light the vista of ranges rising over the sea. The majority of Kent's paintings from his time in Greenland are painted in the same style, with realistic landscapes and minuscule characters near the bottom of the page. The colors in most of his paintings do not vary much in respect to his Greenland pieces. These Greenland artworks are idealistic landscapes, while Kent's pieces from his time in Newfoundland reflect the simplest style in a more obvious way. 
His symbolist tendencies appear in landscapes of Greenland as dreams, fantasies, and visions of the perfect place, according to folk and outsider art in the Adirondacks, a PDF from Hamilton.edu. During the early 20th century, styles of art included symbolism. Picasso's Blue Period influenced some of Kent's later Greenland works. Fauvism, Fauvism Expressionism, and Matisse. Other influences on Kent's work during this time include the Russian Revolution in 1917, World War I, and the Great Depression. Perhaps his peaceful Greenland scenes are his escape from these gruesome events. Edward Hopper's Blackwell's Island on Crystal Bridges' website for Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas, under their early 20th century collection, is what I will be comparing to Kent's Greenland landscape. This piece was created in 1928, four years before Rockwell Kent's Greenland landscape. Both pieces are oil on canvas, but Blackwell's Island is a bit larger than Greenland landscape, at 34.5 inches by 59.5 inches. Hopper's piece is, one, is of the first lunatic asylum in New York. The mental hospital operated there until 1901 when a medical hospital modified the building to make it fit for their use. The hospital was located here until 1955 before it moved to Manhattan. When this happened, the asylum was left abandoned. According to crystalbridges.org, Edward Hopper was found, fond of painting subjects that were set apart from society, for example, Blackwell's Island, much like Rockwell Kent. Kent's Greenland landscape illustrates his love of places secluded from the bustle of everyday life, such as the quiet, serene mountains of Greenland. Both pieces use contrasting colors of vibrant blues and greens with monochromatic browns and grays to emphasize the subjects that are separated from society. In Kent's piece, the characters at the bottom of the painting, though in a group, live a fairly lonely life in the harsh Greenland climate. In Hopper's piece, the mental patients living in the asylum are physically removed from the crowded city life because of their health, leaving them ostracized and alone. While Ken's painting is a nature landscape, Hopper painted a landscape of the industrialized society with buildings and a motorboat. Hopper's painting shows how influences such as World War I and the Great Depression have affected others in society, while Ken's piece serves in, as an escape from these tough times. These pieces are similar to other paintings of this time in their very structured lines, bold colors, and strong brush strokes. Out of all the pieces in the Crystal Bridges collection, this one struck me the most. To me, it portrayed an almost automatic sense of peace and serenity just by looking at its bold, calming colors. I can almost feel the crisp air coming off of the ocean water. The sunset is positively enchanting, and I could sit staring at the purple mountains for hours. I love speculating about what the people are doing. Are they coming in from a fishing trip? Preparing for a hunt in another area of the wilderness? This painting is so calming and peaceful to my overzealous mind and can put me into a sort of dreamlike trance. Here's my bibliography slide. Um, I hope you enjoy my project and I hope you have a wonderful break.